In this experiment, you will learn how to use and manipulate different solution concentration units. You will also calibrate volumetric glassware and re-familiarize yourself with digital analytical balances as you measure masses using precision and accuracy. In part A of the experiment, you will find the concentration of a saturated potassium dichromate solution. A solution is a homogeneous mixture consisting of a solute and a solvent. The solute is the substance that is dissolved in the solution. In this experiment, the solute is potassium dichromate. The solvent is the substance, usually a liquid, in which the solute is dissolved. In this experiment, the solvent is water. When a solvent can no longer dissolve additional solute, the solution is said to be saturated. Set up a 150 ml beaker containing approximately 75 ml of water on a hot plate and bring it to a boil. Measure the mass of an empty evaporating dish on an analytical balance and record the mass in your data book. Dispense 6 ml of the saturated potassium dichromate into the dish. Quickly before any of the solution evaporates, weigh and record the mass of the evaporating dish containing the 6 ml of solution. Place the evaporating dish and contents on top of the 150 ml beaker, which should now be at a gentle boil. This process will start the evaporation of the solvent in order to determine the mass of the contained solute. Once evaporated, remove the dish and remove any water droplets from underneath the dish. Place it on a clay triangle on top of a hot plate, which should be at a temperature setting no higher than 2. Continue until a constant mass has been reached. This will ensure that all of the solvent has been removed. The following data must be obtained in order to complete Part A calculations. First, the volume of potassium dichromate solution obtained. Second, the mass of solid potassium dichromate remaining after evaporation. Third, the molar mass of potassium dichromate. This can be found on the CRC handbook. Fourth, the calculated moles of potassium dichromate remaining in the evaporating dish. And fifth, the mass of solvent in potassium dichromate solution obtained. Table 9-1 in your lab manual lists the density of water depending on temperature. This table will be used to find the volume of water in the solution. If the temperature in the lab is between two values on the table, a calculation like the example shown will be made. Look on the table to find the two temperatures the actual temperature falls between. Calculate the absolute difference between the corresponding densities and divide by the difference between the two temperature values. This calculated value will then be multiplied by the difference between the actual temperature and the lower of the two temperatures that the actual temperature falls between. This is the density difference between the actual temperature and the lower of the two temperature values from the table. The value is then subtracted from the density of the lower temperature value. The volume of solid potassium dichromate can be found by dividing the mass of solid found by the density of the molecule. The density value can be obtained from the CRC handbook. You now have all the information required for party calculations. Molarity is the most widely used measure of concentration in chemistry. It is the moles of solute per liter of solution. Divide the calculated moles of potassium chromate by the volume in liters of water. Molality is used in place of molarity when it is important for the concentration to be independent of temperature. To calculate, divide moles of potassium dichromate by the mass in kilograms of water. Parts per million is defined as parts of solute per one million parts of solution. To calculate, divide mass of potassium dichromate in milligrams by kilogram of solution. There are multiple percent by mass calculations. Percent by mass over mass is a ratio of grams of solute to grams of total solution. Percent by mass over mass of solute is a ratio of grams of solute to grams of solvent. They are calculated by dividing the mass of the solute by the mass of the solution or the mass of the solvent, respectively, as shown. There are also multiple percent by volume calculations. Percent by mass over volume is a ratio of grams of solute to mils of total solution. Percent by mass over volume of solvent is the ratio of grams of solute to mils of solvent. Percent by volume over volume is the ratio of mils of solute to mils of solution. These are calculated by dividing the grams of solute or volume of solute by the volume of solution or solvent as shown on the slide. Calibration of volumetric glassware such as pipettes, 
is important because it gives an analyst an idea of how close the actual volume of solution it contains to the volume that is indicated. For example, how close is the volume of a 25 ml pipette to exactly 25.00 ml? This depends on the temperature of your solution, in this case water, and the buoyancy force caused by the displacement of air by the water. To begin, fill a clean burette with water and make sure there are no air bubbles in the tip. Drain the burette until the meniscus is close to 0.00 ml. Record the exact initial volume to two decimal places. On an analytical balance, weigh a 125 ml Erlenmeyer flask and rubber stopper. Record the mass to four decimal places and handle the flask with a Kim wipe instead of your hands to avoid contamination. Drain 10 milliliters of water into the flask, recording the final volume of the burette to two decimal places. Stopper and reweigh the flask, now containing the 10 mil aliquot, on the same balance as previously used. Repeat this procedure with the remaining contents of the burette, adding 10 more milliliters to the Erlenmeyer flask and recording the new volume of the burette and new mass of, mass of the flask after each addition. Stop when you reach a volume of 50 mils on the burette. After the 50 milliliters of water have been added to the flask, record the temperature of the water in the flask. Calibration of a 25 milliliter volumetric pipette is performed similarly. First, thoroughly clean and rinse the 25 milliliter volumetric transit pipette. Then, on an analytical balance, weigh and record the mass of a 125 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask and stopper. If using the same Erlenmeyer flask as before, weigh it again before starting this portion of the experiment. Record the mass. Pipe at 25 ml of water into the flask using the volumetric transfer pipette. Stopper and reweigh the flask on the same balance. Record the mass of the flask, stopper, and water, and record the temperature of the water in the flask. Knowing the temperature of the water you used, the buoyancy corrected volume of the fluid can be found. The apparent mass is the mass you found by weighing the flask containing the water on an analytical balance, and the apparent volume is the amount that you dispense from the burette or pipette. The true volume can then be found using the density of water at your specific temperature, which is listed in Table 9-2. If the temperature you measured is between values on the table, you'll have to calculate the correct density for your temperature. If it is similar to this example, where the measured temperature is halfway between two values of the table, the average of the two densities can be used. If it isn't, a calculation like the one on slide 5 will have to be used to find the correct density. Once you have determined the density of water at the correct temperature, the true volume of the water can be found by multiplying the apparent mass by the density.